Hi, I'm Dr. Andrio, Professor of General Surgery and Alternative Surgery. Let's discuss what exactly the respiratory system is. A respiratory system's function is to allow gas exchange. The space between the alveoli and the capillaries, the anatomy or structure of the exchange system, and the precise physiological uses of the exchange gases vary depending on the organism. In humans and other mammals, for example, the anatomical features of the respiratory system include airways, lungs, and the respiratory muscles. Molecules of oxygen and carbon dioxide are passively exchanged by diffusion between the gaseous external environment and the blood. This exchange process occurs in the alveolar region of the lungs. Other animals, such as insects, have respiratory systems with very simple anatomical features, and in amphibians even the skin plays a vital role in gas exchange. Plants also have respiratory systems, but the directionality of gas exchange can be opposite to that in animals. The respiratory system in plants also includes anatomical features, such as holes on the undersides of leaves known as stomata. For mammals, including humans, respiration is essential. In these organisms, the respiratory system can be subdivided into an upper respiratory tract and the lower respiratory tract based on anatomical features. The upper respiratory tract includes the nasal passages, pharynx, and the larynx, while the lower respiratory tract is comprised of the trachea, the primary bronchi, and lungs. The respiratory system can also be divided into physiological or functional zones. These include the conducting zone, the region for gas transport from the outside atmosphere to just above the alveoli, the transitional zone, and the respiratory zone, the alveolar region, where gas exchange occurs. So what's the physiology of respiratory system in mammals? Ventilation of the lungs is carried out by the muscles of respiration. Ventilation occurs under the control of the autonomic nervous system from parts of the brain stem, the medulla oblongata, and the pons. This area of the brain forms the respiration regulatory center, a series of interconnected brain cells within the lower and middle brain stem, which coordinate respiratory movements. The sections are the pneumotaxic center, the pneumatic center, and the dorsal and ventral respiratory groups. This section is especially sensitive during infancy, and the neurons can be destroyed if the infant is dropped and stroke or shaken violently. The result can be death due to shaken baby syndrome. Inhalation is initiated by the diaphragm and supported by the external intercostal muscles. Normal resting respirations are 10 to 18 breaths per minute, with a time period of 2 seconds. During vigorous inhalation, at rates exceeding 35 breaths per minute, or in approaching respiratory failure, accessory muscles of respiration are recruited for support. These consist of sternocleidomastoid, platysma, and the scalene muscles of the neck. Under normal conditions, the diaphragm is the primary driver of inhalation. When the diaphragm contracts, the ribcage expands and the contents of the abdomen are moved downward. This results in a larger thoracic volume and negative suction pressure with respect to atmospheric pressure inside the thorax. As the pressure in the chest falls, air moves into the conducting zone. Here, the air is filtered warmed, and humidified as it flows to the lungs. During forced inhalation, as when taking a deep breath, the external intercostal muscles and accessory muscles aid in further expanding the thoracic cavity. Exhalation is generally a passive process, however, active or forced exhalation is achieved by the abdominal and the internal intercostal muscles. During this process air is forced or exhaled out. The lungs have a natural elasticity. 
As they recoil from the stretch of inhalation, air flows back out until the pressures in the chest and the atmosphere reach equilibrium. During forced exhalation, as when blowing out a candle, expiratory muscles including the abdominal muscles and internal intercostal muscles generate abdominal and thoracic pressure, which forces air out of the lungs. The right side of the heart pumps blood from the right ventricle through the pulmonary semilunar valve into the pulmonary trunk. The trunk branches into right and left pulmonary arteries to the pulmonary blood vessels. The vessels generally accompany the airways and also undergo numerous branchings. Once the gas exchange process is complete in the pulmonary capillaries, blood is returned to the left side of the heart through four pulmonary veins, two from each side. The pulmonary circulation has a very low resistance due to the short distance within the lungs compared to the systemic circulation, and for this reason, all the pressures within the pulmonary blood vessels are normally low as compared to the pressure of the systemic circulation loop. The major function of the respiratory system is gas exchange between the external environment and an organism's circulatory system. In humans and mammals, this exchange facilitates oxygenation of the blood with a concomitant removal of carbon dioxide and other gaseous metabolic wastes from the circulation. As gas exchange occurs, the acid-base balance of the body is maintained as part of homeostasis. If proper ventilation is not maintained, two opposing conditions could occur. 1. Respiratory acidosis, a life-threatening condition, and 2. Respiratory alkalosis. Upon inhalation, gas exchange occurs at the alveoli, the tiny sacs, which are the basic functional component of the lungs. The alveolar walls are extremely thin, approx. 0.2 micrometers. These walls are composed of a single layer of epithelial cells, type I and type Roman II epithelial cells in close proximity to the pulmonary capillaries, which are composed of a single layer of endothelial cells. The close proximity of these two cell types allows permeability to gases and, hence, gas exchange. The respiratory system lies dormant in the human fetus during pregnancy. At birth, the respiratory system becomes fully functional upon exposure to air. Although some lung development and growth continues throughout childhood, preterm birth can lead to infants with underdeveloped lungs. These lungs show incomplete development of the alveolar type Roman II cells cells that produce surfactant. The lungs of preterm infants may not function well because the lack of surfactant leads to increased surface tension within the alveoli. Thus, many alveoli collapse such that no gas exchange can occur within some or most regions of an infant's lungs, a condition termed respiratory distress syndrome. Basic scientific experiments carried out using cells from chicken lungs, support the potential for using steroids as a means of furthering development of type Roman II alveolar cells. In fact, once a premature birth is threatened, every effort is made to delay the birth, and a series of steroid shots is frequently administered to the mother during this delay in an effort to promote lung growth. Thanks for listening.